Hi everyone, this is Mike with a video, a uh, third video in my series Calculus in a Nutshell. This video is focused on a particular topic in Module 4 called Related Rates. Uh, there is another video that will follow this one that summarizes Module 4 as a whole. This one focuses on a particularly challenging topic for many students in Calc 1, and so I wanted to offer some advice about how to handle it. So just a quick uh, reminder about where we are in the course. Calculus really has three main topics or ideas in it. The first idea is limits, which you studied in module two. The second big idea, which we're in the middle of working through right now, is called derivatives. And so module three was an introduction to sort of the basic ideas about derivatives. And module four is about different ways that we can apply the idea of derivatives to learn about certain kinds of functions or about certain phenomena. And the third big idea, which is the focus of modules five and six, has to do with integrals. And of course, uh, we'll get to that later. So we're at the beginning of module four, which is uh, this thing called related rates. And the question might be, well, why do we care about related rates? Well just using your everyday experience and um, personal understandings, you can imagine that uh, oftentimes when one thing changes, it affects something else and creates a change uh, in that other thing along with it. So here are some possible examples. So just take a sort of abstract geometric example. If the side of a square changes, then its area is going to change, uh, as will its perimeter. When the demand for a commodity changes, then the supply for that commodity also changes. Uh, that's a common uh, theme in uh, basic economics. It's the, called supply and demand, and those things affect one another. You can also add water to a bathtub, which will change the volume of the water, and it will change the height of the water in the tub as well. That's sort of a common uh, sort of science or math question. Uh, another one from physics, if you change the amount of electricity flowing through an electromagnet, that changes the character of the magnetic field. And so changing one thing in the system creates change in another. Or take biology. Uh, when the population of a community changes, so will its need for resources, for food, for water, for space, things like that. And so this is a common thing that we want to study. Um, thinking about limits, uh, thinking about derivatives as rates of change, as things change, that often creates change in other things, and that's what related rates are about. So related rates refers to the way that we quantify that change. Uh, we want to be specific about how changing one thing will create change in something else. So that's what we're doing here in related rates. Um, and it is commonly a significant challenge for students in Calc 1. Related rates is the topic that you will often hear students say they had the most trouble with. And unfortunately, if there were an easy uh, method that you could always apply for solving these problems, then they wouldn't have the reputation that they have. So. Um, the short way of saying this is that, that it's not easy. Um, there's not sort of a, a specific formula that someone can give you that will work all the time and for every person studying it. Having said that though, there are some common tips which I think can make your life a little bit easier with these kinds of problems. And what I hope you'll pay attention to as you work through this section on related rates is uh, try and pay attention to ways in which the other video lessons echo the tips and uh, ideas that I'm expressing here. Um, so even though they may be articulated slightly differently, my hope is that what I'm saying in this video will um, agree for the most part with what you're hearing in the other video lessons. So here are some tips for solving these kinds of problems. First, you'll often hear from people uh, that writing what you know uh, is the great way to start. The problem is that writing what you know, although easy to do, 
doesn't often help you get what you want. <laughs> so writing what you know um, it isn't quite enough because it's hard to know what, what makes these problems really tricky is knowing what to do with the information that you know. So instead, I recommend instead of starting by writing what you know, start these problems by writing down what you want. Uh, the items that you're going to work on will always specify that you want to find a rate. We're talking about derivatives, and so you will be searching for a kind of rate. So write down what that rate is. If you are talking about finding the change in area um, based on the change in a, a side, then you're going to write uh, a derivative that reflects that. If you are looking at, for example, a change in volume over time, that's what that third uh, example might be. dv dt expresses a rate of change of volume with respect to a change in time. And so my recommendation is to write down what it is you're trying to find first. Typically, though not always, the rate that you want is changing with respect to time. So you'll typically have a ds dt or a dv dt or a da dt or something like that. Not always, but often. And so t is often a variable that's, that you care about changing. And once you've figured out what it is that you want, your job then, again, this is not always easy, but um, your job then is to think about a relationship that connects the target quantity. Maybe that's volume, maybe that's distance, maybe that's temperature, uh, various other things. Think about how that quantity relates to others. So distance might come from Pythagorean theorem or an area might come from some formula relating to that shape or a formula relating to volume. Um, think about uh, formulas and equations that relate that quantity to others that you might be aware of or might be given in the problem. And then in order to follow that tip, in order to, to write a relationship between quantities, uh, oftentimes it can be helpful to draw a picture. Um, a lot of times the situation will involve right triangles or some other shape. And if you're able to draw a picture of that shape, then sometimes it will give you a clue as to what relationships you want to consider. But again, uh, it's not foolproof, but, but it is a, a potential strategy. And once you have an equation that relates the different aspects of the situation, that's when you take the derivative. Don't take the derivative until you have an equation that, that puts the quantities together that you need. And when you use the derivative, you want to be careful to use implicit differentiation because a lot of times there are several variables floating around. And so using implicit differentiation is the tool or the technique that we use in those kinds of circumstances. And then only after differentiating should you start plugging in values or numbers that you're given into the problem. Uh, one common mistake that students make in these types of problems is that they plug in the constants or the numbers that they're given in the problem statement way too early, and that causes uh, issues down the line. So my recommendation is to uh, write down what you want then write an equation that relates what you want to uh, other quantities or the quantity that you want to change uh, as it relates to other quantities. And then uh, differentiate, take the derivative. And once you do that, that's when you should start plugging in uh, numbers that you're given into the problem. So my hope is that those seven tips give you an idea about a good way to approach solving these challenging problems. Pay attention to how, you, uh, how these tips are repeated or echoed in some of the other video lessons, and I wish you luck. Please be sure to let me know if you have questions as you work.